Well, welcome back to another episode of the Small Business Big Stories podcast. It has definitely been a minute uh, since we last recorded. Uh, I had a baby and that's been really exciting. Uh, I made a slight career change, um, but most importantly, we're back here today um, and I have this amazing guest with me. Uh, and we are just going to talk all things business and her business and, uh, how she sort of transitioned through multiple businesses. Uh, so Vera, if you want to introduce yourself, you do it better than you would do it better than I would. Thank you. Thank you so much. (laughs) And thank you for having me. And I'm so happy to be here. Congratulations on your newborn. Thank you. You're a lovely mom. (laughs) Thank you. I'm trying. (laughs) You are. I can feel it. (laughs) That's part of my job in my new business as a relationship coach to sort of feel people and and where they're at in their lives and how they how they interrelate with each other and, and with their families. So I just want you to know I get a really good vibe. Awesome. Yeah. So, so I am a relationship coach. I've recently uh, just launched a business that's called the Return on Self Investment. So it's it's like magic. So essentially, um, we all we all come from somewhere, people, places, things. We develop. Um, uh, we develop like routines, habits Absolutely. in our lives, from, and a lot of it comes from what we've seen growing up. So we're either, I find, repeating patterns, we are opposing patterns, like I don't want that, or yep. I will never marry a man like my dad, yes. for example, which is something <laughs> I hear often, yeah. uh, then you end up becoming the dad. But anyways, that's a different story. <laughs> uh, well, we also have a choice to integrate. So we can pick and choose what we want from our life, but we need to want to go there. So this is my new business. It's essentially about breaking down all the walls, the barriers, uh, the routines and getting to the heart, the essence of who you are as a human, Mm -hmm. and then putting that into perspective so that you can consciously make decisions in your life and lead your life with your passions and desires and connect your outside life with your inside life. So like uh, speaking from experience... I had I had everything. I was married. I built a house. I had cars. We traveled. We have two beautiful kids. Right. So um, the outside facade, I'll call it a facade, mm-hmm. because it was yeah. it wasn't real. Like the things were real, but I wasn't real. Sure. So I help clients to match what they're feeling on the inside with how they're living on the outside. Amazing. I definitely want to get into your your current business now, but I want to just take it back a second um, and how I came to know of you. Um, and so I was living in and around the downtown area and I was really craving, you know, my Greek food. <laughs> <laughs> it's something that I crave often, uh, being half Greek. And so I came across a place called Fat Lamb Cuisina And I walked in and it was like I was in my grandparents' village. Like you walk in and you see the incredible artwork on the wall. You hear the village music. That was something that I definitely missed uh, going into any other Greek place I had eaten at. I mean, there's some staples on the Danforth um, where you would go in and and definitely feel that vibe. But in that particular area, um, I hadn't found that. And so uh, I... I saw you and I saw you kind of like working away with your husband in the back and, and other colleagues. And I was like, wow, this feels like I walked in to, uh, visiting my family. And so tell us a little bit about that business and kind of how that started, um, and then brought you to where you are now. So, I love fat lamb cuisine. Yeah. <laughs> love fat lamb cuisine. I love cooking. I love people. Like, I think that my two favorite things in the whole world are people and food. Yes. <laughs> right? Cooking and eating. And I and would then, agree. <laughs> right? Welcome again in the Greek culture, right? Yeah. Bringing the people in and creating that environment yeah. for to celebrate, right? Eating or gathering, it's a celebration. And really, that's what fat lamb was. So Chris and I backtrack a bit. So yeah. before Fat Lamb Cuisina at 874 Young Street, yes. before that brick and mortar, uh, we were a catering company. We did farmers markets. We, um, yeah, we were just in people's homes in a different way. We, yeah. we weren't there for people to come to us. 
So when the opportunity came to open a small location at Young and Davenport, we're like, yeah. Young and Davenport, like there's nothing really there. Yeah. And it's sort of like a dead zone. People walk up to Yorkville. Sure. They walk down to Davenport, but they don't really come south. Yeah. Like right there. So we thought, you know what? Let's give it a try. And and we did. And and we made, like, I could hear people when we were working inside the restaurant to make it all pretty for our grand opening. We opened March 14th. Oh, because it was pie day. Oh, March okay. 14th. And yeah, we opened with our spanakopita, our, our of course. spinach pies. Yes. Yes. Uh, in 2017. So we had like paper up on the windows. And so I'm cleaning. My family's there. My grandmother, who is almost 100. Yeah. We were talking about <laughs> We just about, talked about it. Exactly. We're going to bring her up shortly. Oh, we should. <laughs> we definitely should. Um, um, so I could hear people standing outside of my door. They couldn't see me because of the paper in the window. Yeah. What? Fat lamb. What's this? That sounds so cool. Oh, Greek food on Young Street. Yeah. I was like, wow. Yeah, they're we're really... like, thank God. We've been missing this. <laughs> and I was so nervous. I'm like, oh my goodness. I really hope that I will live up to their expectations. Yeah. You know, because it's such a passion project. Absolutely. So, and a restaurant is... And just because, like, I've seen people in my family run a restaurant, own a restaurant. It's a risky, like, venture to take on. Um, and you just, you you never know. You never know. And you, you will never um, have any time to yourself mm-hmm. ever again. Mm. So as a small business owner, yeah. you are, you're running the restaurant. You're a cook. You're a chef. You're a waiter. You're an accountant. You're a janitor. You're a plumber. Yeah. You know, you do it all. And Chris and I did that. Yeah. And uh, I was lucky enough to have that solid partner that was just as invested in the business and in the concept yes. as as myself. So so for us it was about a little piece of Greece in Toronto. Yeah. So like you like you mentioned the music, uh the food, the the hustle and bustle, the greeting, right? Yeah. The welcoming. And when I walked in, there were multiple times that I walked in by the way. Um and just heard other people talking about the food it was like you had created something that no one else had in that area. And I like got on the phone and talked to my dad about it. Thank you. And they were just like, oh, wait, we've heard of this place. Um, And we're dying to go. And so, yeah, word traveled really fast from Toronto to Montreal. And uh, and it's what I want to kind of get to is uh, is you running the business with your partner. Um, and just like with family in general, because I did, I noticed that there were a few like young, I don't know if they were your, your kids helping out or just, okay. And just, uh, some younger, some younger folks that were there. So I thought, I assume maybe it was family, but aside from that, just running a business with your partner in general, Mm -hmm. uh, how, how was that? Yeah. So, so I get asked that question, yeah. like, <laughs> how are you still together? Yeah. That is the question. Either, that comes I feel up. like it either works or it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. So it's so interesting because up until I met Chris, yeah. I, I didn't, I did not find that partner that, right. that match, but I also wasn't ready for it. Sure. When I met him, I don't know. I, I feel like I changed. Mm. I, I, I opened my, my eyes. I let my guard down. Yeah. Um, and I found someone that, that is truly like my person. Right. Yeah. So, so that made it easier. So it made it easier and it was really all in the communication. Yeah. Communication and the ability to bite your tongue Mm. when you should yeah <laughs> yeah because it's I'm still it, learning being tactful <laughs> me too he's so good at it and, and I feel like I'm not yeah. well I'm better at it now yeah yeah because it's an awareness sure but and you have to be open to it too like yeah we'll like come to talk about we're not always right <laughs> what yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah that's a thing mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> um that's that's incredible. Yeah. Cause I've, again, I've spoken to different people who run a business with their family or with their partners. Um, and I've heard an overwhelming response of it works. Uh, so, and then there have been a few where it's just like, we tried it and it just, that, Mm -hmm. that path just didn't work for us. Um, to be honest with you, and I think my family could agree too, I don't know if, yeah, working with my family would, would necessarily 
just, you know, mesh well yeah. or make sense for us. Sure. Uh, but because I've heard these this overwhelming feedback of, you know, partners working together and it just flowing really well. And I think not only having communication, but the right kind of communication, because that's something that I've heard over and over again about what it means to have uh, a flourishing, productive relationship. Commu- there's trust, there's loyalty, um, and then there's this big communication piece. And I think what I've learned over the last, I don't know, maybe five, six years or so is that Yes, there's communication, but what kind of communication are you having Mm -hmm. within that? So when you guys were running Fat Lamb Cuisina, um, that was just something that you guys had to learn. It's like your different communication styles. So so what we had to learn is to say what we really meant. Right. Like what we were really wanting to say. Yeah. So not just talking and saying words, like communicating that way, there's a difference. Yeah. But also like saying what you mean. Um, expressing your need, like, right. hey, we're, you know, we're catering to 500 people this weekend, so we need, and I'm like ultra organized X, yeah. Y, Z, and Chris is like, oh, can you just give me X? Because I can't take Y and Z. Sure. Like, he, it, it was too much for him. So yeah. he was able to express what he could handle. That. And then it's up to me to say, you know, I could decide to say, well, no, I'm going to tell you it's X, Y, and Z and hear it. Cause that's what makes sense to me. Yes. Or I could just pause and say, okay, he's overwhelmed. Right. Because this overwhelms him. I know he can get the job done. We've done it before. Right. So I'm just going to give him what he's asked for. And that's part of communication too, is being attentive to those details, being an active listener, something I, again, still have to work. I'm just like, I get so excited about saying what I have to say and like contributing to a conversation that you just, and I know I'm not the only one, is that you talk over or like as soon as the person has said something, you're like, and then this, 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 yes. this right? So I think over time, exactly what you're saying about you and Chris, where it's you see and you sense what he's asking for and maybe even what he's not saying like, yes, talking and communicating is is great and finding that style, but maybe sometimes just in it, that moment, he's not saying something or you're not saying something, but just being able to pick up on that is also, is also I feel, part of what I'm learning as a, as a better communicator. And to be respectful. Yeah. To be, you know, because your way or a a certain way is not the only way, Mm -hmm. right? So, so we also have to understand that earlier we talked a little bit about uh, family styles and family dynamics, like all, we bring all of this into our very being who we are today. So you sitting here as you and me sitting here as me, you know, I'm bringing 48 years of life experience and you'll look (laughs) great. (laughs) Thank you. Um, so it's just like, why am I reacting in this moment? Why do I want to freak out if he or she or they can't blah, blah. Right. You know, is it really them or is it, is it about me? And like nine and a half or maybe (laughs) 9.9 times out of 10, it's about you. Yeah. Yeah. And it's when we had spoken initially and you had said that to me, I was like, damn, I was like, there's no one else. You don't necessarily have to blame yourself, but you just have to be mindful of the fact that you are bringing a lot to a dynamic and your family or past situations and experiences Mm -hmm. come to the forefront depending on the situation that you're dealing with then and there. And you have to take ownership of that. Again, it's not a blame thing. It's not something you should feel guilty about, but it's just something to be mindful of. And when you initially said it, it hit so hard in such a good way because I think for a while I was like, oh, I feel guilty about some of my, not baggage per se, but just past experiences, yeah. right? And just, you know, th- learned behavior. I'm... Mm-hmm. Um, But yeah, when you said that to me, I was just like, it's just who I am and it's how I filter it Mm -hmm. and how I take it on to deal with current situations. That's the most vital part. Mm -hmm. So yeah, thank you for that. You're welcome. Because just 
that in and of itself, I think has helped me to get to where I am. Um, and I think just dealing with, you know, family situations or just conversations with my partner, um, I think it's, it's helped me just process things a bit better. Um, and yeah, I, I'm just thankful and just feel a little bit more mature in the way that I, I handle certain situations. I'm still learning for sure. Uh, but it has been really valuable. That's, that's really great. I'm, thank you so much for sharing that with me. Yeah. Yeah. It makes me feel good too, to know that, you know, sharing information is, is so helpful. Absolutely. Right. Because we, we only know what we know. Exactly. We, until we know more, but we have to be open to learning more. Yeah. So that's, that's the other key part to it, right? So you know what you know up until now, your life experiences have shaped you, molded you, guided you to who you are today, Yeah. but that doesn't mean you're going to stay that way. Right. Right. So who you're going to be tomorrow or when we walk out of the studio is going to be different than who you were when you walked in. Absolutely. Yeah. If you're open to it. Yeah. I'm reading this book right now called The Surrender Experiment okay. uh, by, oh, correct me if I'm wrong, anyone who's listening, Michael Singer, I think his name is. Uh, and it's very much this idea of not being so stuck in here about your the things that you think you're about. So your dislikes, your likes. Uh, and he sort of takes you through his life from the beginning of his surrender experiment to present and what that, what that evolved into. So he decided to take on this mentality where he was just like, I'm just going to let life just kind of like take its course and let me kind of, um, in no uncertain words, go with the flow. And it opened him up to so many business adventures, personal relationships and things that he wouldn't have otherwise imagined if he had just continued, like you were saying before, like you have to be open to these things, right? Whether it be the relationships that you develop, um, or the businesses that you take on. So, um, so let's kind of like bring it back here. So you have Fat Lamb Cuisina. Yes. You guys are open for how long were, was a brick and mortar open for? So we were open, through COVID. Yes. Yes. And we pivoted the business model. Right. So, so the other thing that happened there is that we had to be open to change. Yeah. Right. Because of the pandemic. Um, and because there were no more people on Young Street. Absolutely. Like, like, Unforeseen circumstances, things that people couldn't even imagine. It was so cool to see. And, and again, it was, it was sort of conflicting because it was sad to see businesses boarded up mm-hmm people not being able to afford to continue to run their business. And then there was this other side of people like yourself pivoting your business, taking advantage of that online platform, whatever that meant through Instagram or, yes. or what have you. Uh, so yeah, how did that, how did that envelop? So, so we closed the business, I think it was March, maybe the 20th or the 17th. I can't remember whatever that day, that, that big announcement happened. Right. And we were home for nine days. I cried for nine days. Yeah. I was like, what are we doing here? What's happening? Like, yeah. there's so many unknowns. So it took me nine days to figure out, um, or to wake up rather, with a plan. Right. I'm like, Chris, we're doing family dinners. And we're going to deliver to whoever, where? Where are Brittany's parents in Montreal? We're going there. Yeah. You want a leg of lamb? So, yeah, I'm going to bring you a leg of lamb. So we did a free delivery service throughout all of GTA and then some because it was just him and I. We laid off our staff. Um, We had to create a bubble. So my kids were staying with their dad. It's tough. Yeah. It was tough. So I'm not with my kids like crazy. I couldn't imagine being away from my son now. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't know how I did it. So, so I'm out working, deli- making food. I'm sourcing food. I'm prepping food. I'm cooking food. I'm delivering food. Coming yeah. back to the restaurant to clean, because I have no staff. It's just Chris and I. Right. And and the kids are with their dad. And so, because there was a little bit of a scare initially, um, I would walk up to the house and just kind of like wave to them. Oh, wow. And, yeah. 
anyways, tough times. Yeah. We made it through. We also uh, became part of this uh, initiative called Sustain the Line. Okay. So we were feeding frontline workers. We were sending food to nurses, to doctors, to Incredible, because they needed it. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, and they were so, so, so grateful. And and they actually kept calling. Yeah. Oh, thank you for this. Can we place an order? Yeah. Um, Because, you know, good food goes a long way. It's so nourishing. And good people. Good people. Like, just that thought of you being like, we're going to take this to the community and sort of, yes, we have to scale things down, but it's like bringing it back to probably why you guys started Fat Lime Cuisina to begin with, right? Exactly. To serve the community, to do what you love. Mm-hmm. And now you're giving to people who are doing what they love and need that support, being the frontline workers yes. uh, and bringing people and food together. There's nothing like it. Yeah, exactly. There's nothing like it. Yeah. Like it took us to, it took me personally to like next level. Yeah. I was like flying high every day. I was so happy. Like whatever happened before 11 a.m. Yeah. Before we opened the door and we turned on <laughs> that Greek matter. music, it didn't matter. Like, oh, is this ready? Oh my God, you got to go. The yeah. oven, the potatoes, the this, do it. Because <laughs> I'm very like, I don't know. Chris is, is a godsend for him to put up with me because I'm very like <laughs> orderly. Orderly and, and yeah. opinionated, like this needs to be done now, <laughs> and like this, and like this, and he's like, oh, "Okay, sounds good." Yeah, like, okay. And then so we left. Why are you clock. so calm? Yeah, you're so calm, and it's like that's okay. I understand. You're, you know, you're really feeling anxious. I'm like, you are amazing. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> right? That's awesome. So, and then the door would open, and we'd just blast the music, and then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, hi, Brittany, nice to see you again. Yeah. How are you? Right? It just so all it, went by the way. <laughs> yeah, everything else that's crazy. Yeah, that, like other people don't need to know yeah because that's not why you come to fat lamb you come to eat you come to see me you come to feel good absolutely yeah and your- they were dealing with everything that was mm. not making them feel good um and obviously like the nature of their job being to help people yes uh but in that time nurses doctors anyone you know our any medical service mm. was really we're really going through it, just the hours and just, you know, the heartache of seeing people really sick. So to have that sort of glimmer, uh, that smile, that presence, that aura, that vibe and good food. I can tell you without even being there, it went a long way. Uh, Yes. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) So, so that was part of it. Also at the same time, we actually bought a second location. So a lot of people don't know this. I didn't know that. Because we didn't have a chance. Uh, we didn't even have a chance at it. Yeah. We got the keys 10 days before the pandemic. And okay. then we started a, a very minor reno. Where was it? Um, in Leslieville. So right on Queen. Oh, Queen and wow. Pape. Yeah. Great location. Very good. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, it didn't last. Landlord was not so friendly. He didn't play nice. Yeah. We were paying... A lot of money for... It's Leslieville, so I can only imagine. Yeah, that we couldn't open because the construction workers were not permitted to work. Right. So we're stuck. It's like this domino effect. You wanted to start, but this wasn't in place and this person couldn't do this. And Exactly. So we ended up losing it. So Mm -hmm. that that was done. And then from there, like Fat Lamb changed. It was different. It wasn't the same. We still had the great same quality, same atmosphere, but we lost our tables. Yeah. Like we had a big long harvest table and we intentionally picked a harvest table yeah. where in every other restaurant there's like, you know, two seaters, twos, 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 sure. twos. No, we wanted people to sit together because that's part of the experience. Like, and oh, that's what, what you she? felt what? walking in. So, so that was it. And, yeah. uh, and then from there, um, I went back to school. I did my coaching certification through an international coaching federation accredited Thing and all of this stuff and yeah um, and now yeah. you're here and now I'm here and so I'm happy I and I can tell mm-hmm. uh so making that transition was there any point and I'm sure there was but um what was what was the point like where you were you were like okay I'm I'm ready for this transition it's scary I'm ready for it but I'm unsure about it how did that how did that transition go so okay so initially i think i felt like i i i know i felt so sad yeah 
I was so sad because I knew that I couldn't have my passion project. It was just not going to work. We could see the writing on the wall in yeah. terms of food costs and, um, you know, the, um, all the restrictions, like with restaurants being closed, it just, it wasn't the same. Sure. So I knew that I wanted to do something different. I went back to school during the pandemic yeah. and, and I, I love people. I love being with people. But so how I balanced it out is that I didn't stop catering. Right. Like I'm still catering. I was catering yesterday. Under, like under fat lamb cuisine. Yeah. 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 Amazing. And yeah. yeah. And then you told me that you guys are doing these in-person events yes. where you take people through sort of this cultural experience exactly. and teach them uh, and have them sort of maybe envelop and discover their their cooking abilities. I say that because I'm still trying. <laughs> I'm still really trying to find I'm gonna help the you. yeah, <laughs> to find the love to cook maybe not love, but mm-hmm. like cooking. I love to eat. Okay. And I can that's a good I start. Can clean the kitchen after okay. we're done. Also good. Um but the process I find it so long that I'm just like, okay, like I'm just, I'm just ready to go. I'm just yeah, ready. To I eat. just want to eat. Yeah. So, so many things that we could talk about there. Yeah. And I, th- I feel like, okay, so backtrack a bit. So sure. yes, cooking classes. Yeah. So I've been, I've cool. been offering them for a few months since maybe the summertime. Um, people love them. What a great way to, to branch out from the initial idea and the initial concept. Yes. And it's still so, it's more personal even because you're going into someone's home uh, and you're able to share, again, culture, just that positivity that food and people bring when they're together. Yeah, and and we put the music on and and then like I put on the show and and here's the leg of lamb and this is what we do with it. This is how we do it. Um, So what I have come to learn is that the things that are easy for me, like cooking, Cooking comes very naturally. Like I can open up an empty fridge, empty-ish fridge and, and figure it out. Yeah and, yeah. and literally throw something together. Okay. That comes with experience, right? Right. Not everyone can do that. Boom. It's something that you have to learn or to be able to, to see. Okay. So, but like, because I can do that, I can offer a lot to my, my clients. Yeah. Right. Something that will add value to to them or to their home or to their cooking experience, their right. eating experience. So I feel like it's it's an added value and it's again pivoting fat lamb because although we we closed the brick and mortar, you're still very much in operation. We are. Yeah, yeah. we are. Or I'm doing it more. Chris is on to other things, but he'll always help. Sure. Yeah. So so yeah, it's fun. And so Bringing that piece that, you know, the, the interest in now becoming a relationship coach. So really getting, you know, that exposure and that one-on-one with people, which you love so much, uh, how, how did that feel initially venturing into that? Mm -hmm. How does it feel now? What does it look like now? Mm -hmm. So it, it always, it felt good. Yeah. It felt good because it's real. And the emphasis on why I chose the title, like I'm a life coach. Yeah. But why do I love relationships so much? And and I think it's a play on words. It's the realness. It's it's about being real. Yeah. So whether it's about being a real person or, or eating real food, for example, like that that's where the beauty of life is. Absolutely. That's where the value is because we nourish ourselves, our bodies, our mind, our soul with our words with the people we choose to to surround ourselves with and, and the food that we eat. Yeah. So so how and the relationship we have with ourselves. The relationship we have with ourselves is where it, it starts. Yeah. Right? So so your life circumstances have brought you to where you are today, here and now, because you needed to learn those lessons. Yeah. Like it or not, accept it. It, it is what it is. Yeah. And they Thank they're you for not saying that and saying it in that way. <laughs> yeah. And they're not all all happy or joyous, you know, uh, memories or experiences. Yeah. And that's okay. We've all had them. Absolutely. We need to, you know, bring that, like bring ourselves to the table. This is all of me. This is what's happened to me in my life. It doesn't mean you have to tell everyone everything, sure. but it's just how you show up. Yeah. And this is what you're, you're doing with your clients. Yes. And so how did you go about 
First of all, like, what was your family's reaction? So they love it. My, yeah. my family is very supportive. They're, I would say, non, non-traditional non Greeks. Yeah. Like they're really cool, very laid back. Like, oh, okay, my child, this is what you want to do. Yeah. Sounds good. You know, how can I help you? Sure. So, so I really, I've always had that love and support from them, mostly. Yeah. Um, we'll talk about my grandmother a little bit later, but she was a little bit more critical. Like, what are you doing and why? (laughs) She had an opinion. Oh yeah. She had an opinion. Oh my gosh. No, but yeah, yeah, they were, they were supportive and that's, and that's great. I think having that support, whether it come from family or whoever you make family is, is really important, especially when you start a new venture. So when you, take on clients is it um is it just like romantic relationships or helping people navigate their familial relationships is it kind of it's it's all of that it's all of that it's all of that and what i find um the most like reoccurring theme is like how why why am i always yelling at my kids why am i always Mm. yelling at my partner um i can't um, he doesn't listen to me. Yeah. He doesn't, you know, do what I ask. Yeah. So, so the blame and the problem is out there. Yes. Right. And so, and most people tend to believe that I did. Yeah. You know, I, I had this marriage. I had, I had a, I, I loved him when I met my husband at the time. Oh, I loved him. It was such a great relationship and it wasn't for a lack of love. It was, we didn't know how to love each other. Mm. That's what broke it down. We weren't there for each other in the way that we needed because we couldn't communicate what it was that we needed and we couldn't hear. We weren't ready. So when I I realized that later on, like I decided to leave the marriage because I was, I was giving an example to my children of a version of myself that I didn't even like. Mm. How can I do that? How can I be this? I can be mom for my kids. Well, I don't even like myself. That right there, when I gave birth to my son and having him now brings on this whole new perspective. And it's like, how am I living my life to show him a good example? I want to be the best. And sure, you know, as, as a human, you make mistakes, you're flawed, uh, and I think it took me some time too to realize that about my parents. Uh, and I want I want my son to see that I make mistakes and I and I navigate through them. But I I want him to see me do it in a way that is self reflective uh, and that brings value to the way he navigates his identity and life itself. Mm-hmm. So I think that is what you just said right there is super crucial. Being a mom, I think, sets in another type of perspective Mm -hmm. where you're just like, well, how am I going to look to my kids? What are they going to absorb from this? Mm -hmm. From me as as a human, as a mother, uh, as a wife. Yeah. Like, so I'm essentially emanating what a healthy relationship looks like, right? Yeah. Because we're married. It's it's a healthy relationship. It's mom and dad. Right. But mom's not coming to the table as her full true self. Yeah. And neither is dad. So but they don't know that. Absolutely. So he's my son is gonna go find a wife like me, right? Mm-hmm. And then the pattern will continue. Yeah. Unless you break the cycle. Because I couldn't fix it, it had to be broken. Let and me, I did it for them. Yeah, let me tell you, I think the best thing, and when my dad, my mom and my dad listen to this, um, they might just like, you know, smirk or be like, Brittany, why did you have to say that? But I'm going to say it. You did the best thing you could for your kids by divorcing your husband. I think that was the best thing my parents did. First of all, um, it it showed me that we don't just make it work because of the kids, because kids absorb, they observe, even when you think they're too young, trust me, we, we feel things. So that was one of the best things that my parents did. And the best thing that they both did too, was find other relationships that really brought value to my life. 
So like my stepmom, for example, um, and, and my mom's partner, like they really brought amazing energy and value to my life that I, to be honest, I don't think with my parents being together, I would have, I would have gotten. So mm-hmm. yeah, you did the best thing. Yeah. Thank, <laughs> thank you for that. I thanks, mean, it's, mom and dad. <laughs> yes. Yes. And thanks to my kids for, <laughs> for still loving me. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I know I, it was hard for them, of yeah. course, because they were very young, five and seven. Yeah. Um, I don't know how old you I was were. nine months old. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so that was kind of even better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you don't essentially have a memory. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But maybe feelings. Yeah. Yeah. There were, yeah, there yeah, were definitely we, residual feelings. Yeah. And, and yeah. our body, one of my favorite books is When the Body Says No by Gabor Mate. Oh. He's a doctor. Uh, he lives out in Vancouver. He's of Hungarian descent. Okay. Gotta uh, he's check like it out. a psychologist, I think, or psychotherapist, psychologist. Anyhow, so he talks about how our body stores trauma live traumas yeah. in in like different places yeah and it like it comes out you know in situations even if we don't have um a memory like you know at this moment I can't tell you exactly what that memory is but I know that this doesn't feel good right I don't know why um our body knows so we have to pay attention to our circumstances mm. or else we get sick that's the like other part physically of it. physically yeah a physical reaction to an emotional situation. Yeah. Yeah. That's really, that's really good to know because I think people, when they interpret relationships, they see it as, whether it be a relationship with themselves or with others, they see it as more of that um, emotional endeavor and not really thinking about that physical aspect of it. Um, Before we wrap up, because I know like, Time flies when you're having a good time. Um, I really, because we were talking about your grandmother oh, yes. for quite some time and, and talking about sort of the elders in our lives and how she sort of brought this definition of what a relationship was, like her relationship with your grandfather and that, and that definition and how that educated you or defined your definition because like we were talking about before you know a relationship in the 19 what was it 40 40 in the 1940s 40s, yeah. um to now could look a lot different but you were also saying it depends yeah. so what kind of yeah what did you what did you gather from her what did oh, what did she teach you what did they teach yeah, you yeah so so much so yeah. much of what i embody and what i align with today and so much of what i don't <laughs> right yeah like i and what you most likely teach to your clients as well exactly so yeah with my clients we'll create a blueprint we'll create a toolkit of what it is that they want to bring with them right into their integrated self yes like who they are from where they come from consciously choosing their behaviors or actions, you know, their thoughts, even their thoughts, we can control our thoughts. We don't have to have, we don't have to be scattered and go, you know, down that rabbit hole of, yeah. of fear all the time. It's okay if it happens, but anyhow, I digress. So back to grandma, <laughs> back to Yaya, who's 97 in a few weeks. Oh my gosh. She is still driving. And still driving, like, hello. God bless her soul. Yeah. Driving, <laughs> no medications. Yeah. Recently been using a cane, which is devastating to her, but right. anyhow, we won't tell anyone. <laughs> Shh, don't tell anyone. <laughs> so in my life, I saw love. So much love. Yeah. My parents, my grandparents, um like just moments of like hugs and kisses and like squishing faces. Oh and, yeah. Right. Don't so, I know it? Yeah. Like it from the just, Greek side. <laughs> exactly. So much of that. Yeah. And also there was an interesting dynamic between my grandmother and my grandfather um, where she, I find myself a little bit like her yeah. Um and where I say I don't want to be, but I'm aware of it, so it's different. So I'm I want to be like that. She she knows what she wants, always has. Mm. You can talk business to her even today. Love it. And she will say, okay, I need you know these ten things. Go and do them for me. Um, and so my grandfather, this is back a long time ago before he passed away, which was many years ago. Yes, he would uh, he would go and get the list, the thing of on the list, right. 
And uh, she would say, Nikomu, you forgot the zinzerella. I, say, I didn't say Coca-Cola. I said zinzerella. Okay. And she, he would be like, oh, Vera, I'm so sorry. I made a mistake. And yeah. she'd be like, that's okay. Wait, do you guys have the same name? We do. I just realized <laughs> that. Yes. Yeah. That's awesome. That yeah. is very interesting, right? Very typical, and, though. And, and very typical. Let yes. me tell you, yes. if I was able to fill a room with the amount of Maria's in my family, it would be, we'd all be, like, they'd all be packed in like sardines. So Yes, continue. that's right. <laughs> I'm so happy that you, your name came outside of the box, <laughs> of the know. Greek box. <laughs> yeah, it was it was close. Okay. Maria, yeah, it was a close uh, runner-up. No, okay. no, it's not. My middle name is actually my grandmother on my mom's side, okay. Marlene. Uh, it was... Marlene, but then kind of added the A at the end. So Marlena. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. So, yeah. yeah. Another beautiful M name. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so yeah, that's, that's it. I mean, I, I have, I've had really great um, role models. Yes. Yes. Uh, and again, they taught me things that I liked and things that I really didn't like. Mm. It took me a long time and many years to accept that even the things I didn't like added value to my life. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, that's very, yeah, that's very perceptive because I'm still sort of, and you continue to as you, as you live and go through life experiences, see what others in your family or those who are connected to you uh, have brought into your life and, and things that you may, just like you said, things that you didn't like, but you're like, but But that is, that's something that I, you take with maybe a grain of salt. Uh, Maybe you take it on, but you redefine it in a way that makes sense to you. So it just comes down to how you decide that these life experiences or your family and those experiences are going to inform your life and inform your decisions and inform your, your type of communication. Yeah. And, and it's, it's ultimately about the color of glasses that you choose to wear, Mm. (laughs) right? So are you going to wear your rosy colored glasses and, and make the best of, of whatever it is Yeah, or make it make sense, make it make sense to you? Sure. Or are you going to be like, no, this is, you know, it's, a judgment or, you know, right away criticize, you know, you, you have the option, you have the choice, we all do, but how does that make you feel at the end of the day? So really, really think about your actions. Yeah. And, and making you a priority when you're, you're navigating these different dynamics, like yes. what are you bringing to this? Exactly. We could sit here for hours yes. and continue okay. <laughs> yeah. and continue on this journey. And I, and I love speaking to you because you give that presence and I'm sure your clients say so you give off this energy where you just want to share your whole life story with you. And I, and I'm sure that's the added value that your, that your clients feel like being a a life coach, you have to bring that, that energy where people want to disclose and be vulnerable with you. Uh, so how is business looking like right now? And, and how are you feeling about it currently? Where do you want to see it go? So, so right now it's a one-on-one. Yeah. Um, it's busy. Yeah. Um, especially around the holidays, Ooh. I find, yeah, people, people really need to talk. They want to talk. Absolutely. So, so I take on the one-on-one clients now. I'm actually relaunching my website. Okay. Amazing. Yes. So I'll, I will let you know when yes. that's up and running and I'm preparing three packages. So I'm, I'm starting to tailor my work in a different way because I am getting so busy right. that I, I just need to put a little bit more structure around it. Um, and then once that is launched, the second part to that launch will be uh, group classes. Yeah. I'm in such awe of how you, whether it be Fat Lamb Cuisina or your life coaching business, you branch off, like you start with one idea and then now that idea has branched off and become more versatile in the service that you provide. Uh, before we go, where can people find you? Uh, so I'm on Instagram right now at Vera Zulas. So just my name, V-E-R-A-T-Z-O-U-L-A-S. And on the website, soon to come at veradzulas.com. Amazing. Thank you so much again. We're going to continue to talk. I'm, I'm looking into and I want to look into getting involved in your, in your cooking classes, because this is something that I've been working on for quite some time is just 
opening up my love for food that much more and that much more extensively and getting more in touch with my Greek culture, having my son and, and wanting to give that to him as well. So let's, we, let's do it. Let's yeah. get cooking. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so very Thank much. You. Thank you.